Star Wars is pretty much a dream gig for vast swaths of actors, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily a good fit for everybody, or that actors want to keep playing around in that Tatooine sandbox forever. And so, sometimes actors who've appeared in the franchise end up drawing a line and calling it a day. They're starting to walk away into that big old binary sunset, never to return, or at least to not return until they decided that actually this is quite a nice gig. I'm Ewan Slees Bagano, this is What Culture Star Wars, and here are seven Star Wars actors who quit. Number seven, Freddie Prinze Jr. Freddie Prinze Jr. provided the voice of Jedi Caden Jarrus throughout Star Wars Rebels for seasons, which culminated with the character's sacrificial death, seemingly bringing his Star Wars tenure to a natural enough end when the show too concluded in 2018. However, Prince Jr. did end up reprising the role in cameo form in both The Rise of Skywalker and in an episode of Star Wars The Bad Batch's first season, since which he straight up confirmed that he's 100% done with the character. In an interview with Christian Harloff, he said that, quote, I was asked to return for The Bad Batch, yeah. I didn't necessarily want to. I feel like every time you hear Kanan's voice since Rebels ended, it really kind of dilutes his impact. I didn't want to do The Rise of Skywalker either. I was asked to a favor, and I feel like all my, all their favors are used up now. Prince Jr. further confirmed that he would not be appearing as the character in the upcoming live action Ahsoka series, adding, quote, I'm done with Caden. I'm too old for that stuff. While this technically doesn't preclude Prince Jr. from playing another Star Wars character in the future, reading between the lines, it certainly sounds like he's happy to move on to other things. Also, gotta love that energy in general. Bloody well, love Freddy Prince Jr. Great dude. Number six. John Boyega. John Boyega rose to prominence playing Finn in the Star Wars sequels, though since the release of The Rise of Skywalker, the actor has spoken candidly about his mixed experience working on the films, namely how Finn's role was reduced in importance over the course of the trilogy. But with the potential for future Star Wars films to bring Finn back into the fold, it was just a matter of time before Boyega was asked about his potential involvement, and in a serious XM interview last summer, he gave a characteristically no nonsense response. Quote, at this point, I'm cool off it. I'm good off it. I think Finn is at a good confirmation point where you can just enjoy him in other things, the games, the animation. But I feel like The Force Awakens to the Rise of Skywalker was good for me. Boyega certainly sounds like he's genuinely done with Star Wars, which is especially interesting given that Disney is currently developing a new Star Wars movie centered around Daisy Ridley's Rey. You would think the studio would have loved to have Boyega be a part of it, but evidently that's not going to happen. Either way, it's onwards and upwards for Boyega. Really excited to see where his career goes next. Number 5. Benicio Del Toro Benicio Del Toro played the small but memorable role of DJ in The Last Jedi, but it actually wasn't the first time he was set to play a character in the Star Wars universe. Del Toro was apparently not only considered to play Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace, but it even won the part and was basically locked into playing the villain for several months of pre-production. However, once George Lucas reduced Maul's role during script rewrites, Del Toro opted to quit the film and, for the better part of 20 years, seemingly the franchise as a whole. Given that he instead went on to appear in Steven Soderbergh's Traffic the very next year, for which he won a Best Supporting Actor Oscar, he's probably pretty okay with how things turned out. As for Del Toro's potential future in the franchise, he's expressed an interest in reprising the role of DJ, though it's also tough to consider where he'd possibly fit in in a future project. Number 4. James Earl Jones James Earl Jones has of course provided the iconic voice of Darth Vader for almost an entire half century, across a bevy of Star Wars media from movies to TV shows and so on. But last summer, Jones confirmed that he had officially retired from voicing Vader, and that his final time personally portraying the character was in 2019's The Rise of Skywalker. However, what makes Jones' departure especially interesting is that he came to an agreement with Disney for his voice to be licensed out in perpetuity. Maturity, with the cutting edge AI software being used to generate new dialogue using Jones's existing voice recordings as a reference. The tech was first used in Obi-Wan Kenobi, and let's be honest, would you have any idea it wasn't Jones voicing Vader unless someone told you? But full disclosure everyone, I hate this. We've had loads of other Darth Vader voice actors in games before. Latching onto Jones' voice this way feels like a grim prophecy of where the studios might be taking this technology, and yeah, I'd rather Star Wars wasn't a part of it. Number 3. Dennis Lawson 
Dennis Lawson played X-Wing pilot Wedge Antilles in the original Star Wars trilogy, though in the decades that followed, the actor largely swore off the franchise, only lending his voice to the 2001 video game Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2, Rogue Leader. In fact, leading up to the release of The Force Awakens, rumors began swirling that Lawson would finally reprise the role of Wedge in live-action form, only for him to bluntly reply that he was done with the series. Quote, I'm not gonna do that. They asked me, but it just would've bored me. More recently, Lawson's nephew Ewan McGregor, who of course plays the younger version of Obi-Wan Kenobi, suggested that his uncle isn't too fond of the entire circus of fandom surrounding the franchise. Quote, he was always really dismissive of it because he did a couple of weeks' work sitting in a cardboard spaceship, and yet he had this massive following. It sort of annoyed him. However, in an unexpected twist of fate, Lawson did indeed return for a blink and you'll miss it cameo as Wedge in The Rise of Skywalker, and has since lent his voice to the Star Wars Squadron's video game, and also an episode of the animated anthology series Star Wars Visions. Number 2. Ahmed Best Few actors, if any, have had a rougher time with Star Wars than Ahmed Best. Portrayed Jar Jar Binks in the prequel trilogy, and proceeded to be mauled by grown adults upset at a children's comic relief appearing in a kids' movie. Yes, I'm going there. I was three when The Phantom Menace came out and had a dancing Jar Jar and a cuddly Jar Jar plush. That was Jar Jar Man. The personal attacks leveled against Best over the years became so overwhelming as to send him into a deep depression, though he did nevertheless return to voice Jar Jar in several Robot Chicken episodes, the Star Wars The Clone Wars animated series, and the animated short Lego Star Wars The Empire Strikes Out. Yet in 2016, Bass confirmed that he had quit Star Wars for good, stating in an interview with the YouTube channel These Are The Actors You're Looking For that he felt he'd done enough as Jar Jar. Quote, I think I've done my damage. I'm good with where I stand in the Star Wars universe. I'd say no. I think I did what I did. I thought it was great. It was fun. But now it's time to to move on. Best kept his word for a few years, though seemingly had a change of heart once Lucasfilm approached him to return the Star Wars franchise as an entirely new character. In 2020, Best hosted the game show Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge as a new Jedi master by the name of Kelleran Beck, who reappeared more recently in The Mandalorian's third season, where he was revealed to be the Jedi who saved Grogu from Order 66. All in all, a lovely conclusion to Best's difficult Star Wars journey. And number one, Terrence Stamp. Terrence Stamp was an undeniably brilliant get for The Phantom Menace, even if his acting talents were largely wasted on the relatively unremarkable character of Chancellor Finis Valorum, who was eventually kicked out of the Senate and replaced by Palpatine, played of course by Ian McDermott. In the years since the film's release, Stamp has minced no words at all about his displeasure shooting his few scenes, citing George Lucas's ostensible lack of interest in performance over the movie's cutting-edge visual effects. Stamp said in an interview with Empire that, quote, we didn't get on at all. I didn't rate him that much as a director, really. I didn't feel like he was a director of actors. He was more interested in stuff and effects. He didn't interest me, and I wouldn't think I interested him. I came all the way back from Australia to do it. I didn't want to, but my agent leaned on me, and I wanted to meet Natalie Portman because I'd seen her in Leon. And I did meet her, and she was absolutely enchanting. But on the day I'm supposed to do my scene with her, for which I traveled halfway around the world, I said, where's Natalie? And George says, that's Natalie, and points to a bit of paper on the wall. It was just boring. Stamp added that he also wasn't well compensated for his role in the $150 million tentpole, and when he agreed to come back for a day of reshoots in exchange for a gift, Lucas ended up giving him some Star Wars stencils. As such, Stamp elected not to reprise his role for either of the prequel movies that followed, ditching a franchise that evidently didn't have much interesting work for him anyway. And there you have it, seven actors who quit Star Star Wars. Are there any other actors you hope will return to the galaxy far, far away? Or do you feel like it's the best that they parted ways? Post your thoughts down in the comments below, and please be sure to drop the video a like if you enjoyed it, and also subscribe to World Culture Star Wars so you don't miss another upload. You can also head back on over to worldculture.com for more lists and pieces like this every day. Either way, I've been Ewan, this has been World Culture Star Wars, and until next time, may the force be with you. Bye!